Hi, my name is Jonathan Sullivan. And my name is Chloe Harrington. We are delighted to have you all join us today for our GCSGEA show. Today's show is brought to you by the GCSGEA Club and we have a great show lined up for you all today. The GCSGEA Club is our GEA Club in Gore Community School, run by our TUI Future Leader students. Today, we will explain in more detail what GCSGEA Club does each year and how it works. We will also discuss the importance of the GAA in Gore Community School and we will hear from Mr Crossan, some of the teachers and coaches and from some of our past players. We will then reveal the GCS 25th anniversary Hurling and Camogie teams. They are very impressive teams and I'm really looking forward to discussing the teams with our special guests later on in the show. So what is the GCS GAA Club and what do we do? To explain more we will hear from the chairperson Liam Shear and some of the other committee members. My name is Liam Shearer and I'm the chairperson of the GCSGA Club. The GCSGA Club is a student one club that we've created in the school as part of the Future Leaders programme. We had an ATM where we elected 20 committee members and thankfully I got elected as the chairperson of the club. We have weekly meetings with the 20 committee members where we plan and organise events for the TY students and other students in the school. Hi, in September, around 14 of us come in for work experience every Friday with the GCSGA Club. We worked on various projects and one of them was organising the AGM. This year we ran our GCS GA AGM online due to COVID. All students were able to vote on their mobile phones while watching the AGM live. Broadcasted the results minutes later and we were really happy with how everything went. We learned a lot from it and learned a lot from the process. Hi, my name is Ava Layden and I'm the secretary of the GCS GA club. Our role as secretary was to take minutes at the weekly meetings and be in correspondence with the local clubs on social media and emails about events and things we were organising with the club. We organised the online primary school skills challenges. The first year hurling and camogie wall ball competition. During the school closures we were busy with our GCS GAA solo challenge which was a series of skills and healthy eating and well-being challenges. Online. We had loads of entries and I was busy reposting them all on our social media pages. We've organised a hurling and camogie fun day, which is a good way to get the first years outside and active. And obviously we've organised the GCS 25th anniversary all-star teams and we can't wait to see what the final teams will be. This was a great way to link the school to the local community. We want to continue to make strong links between GCS GA club and the other clubs in North Clare and South Galway. Hurling and Camogie have always had a very special place in Gore Community School. Over the last 25 years, we've had some really great results on the pitch and we look forward to many more successful years in the future. To tell us more about the importance of sport and especially the GAA here at Gore Community School, let's hear from our school principal, Mr. Brian Crossan, some of the teachers and some well-known GCS GAA players. I'm very proud to be talking to you here today as principal of Gord Community School. We have a very strong tradition in the school of Hurling and Camogie. North Clare and South Galway are steeped in tradition of Hurling and Camogie and it's a very big part of our school. At the moment we're in the middle of lunch break and if I look out I can see that the second year camogie girls are training on the AstroTurf pitch and the first year boys have a wall ball competition down at the alley. That's just a snapshot of some of the projects and uh, activities we have at lunchtime. We have a wide variety of extracurricular activities and I'd like to thank the teachers for all their involvement over the years and um, without the teachers involvement we wouldn't be able to provide the amount of sports uh, and the level that we play at. We consistently play in Senior A hurling and in, in A competitions in all hurling and camogie and it, that's, that's an achievement in itself. So it's absolutely brilliant to see in Gork Community School every single day there'll be somebody on the wall ball, there'll be um, somebody hurling on the AstroTurf, there'll be girls out in the you know the pitches hitting ball, playing matches. It's just absolutely brilliant and it's so much a part of Gork Community School and even with coaching, you know, we've made great friends as teachers, you know, coaching every day with the students and you get a great camaraderie with the students as well. And, you know, we have that for life with them. And even when we meet some, meet some of the girls and some of the lads outside of school that we've coached, 
you just have a great friendship and you know the memories can come floating back every time you meet somebody outside of school that you've coached down through the years and that's lovely to see lovely to see them go on and play with the clubs and their counties and you've a sense of pride and you know you're proud of them that you've had some part to do with their you know their future of their GA. The GCS GA 25th anniversary teams are a fantastic initiative by our wonderful transitional students. They've done remarkable work in compiling a list of the super players who have played for the school over the last 25 years. The hope would be that these players and this initiative would inspire future GCS students for many years to come. Well, I would say that the importance of uh, GA or sport in general in any school is that uh, it creates a sense of community, gives you something to aim at as a group, kind of uh, brings people together. And, uh, you know, we've had a, a, a remarkable run here in, in, in Gorky Community School in relation to sport, and that we've always had the support of, of the school authorities in that, and uh, we, get, we get a lot of people out there doing sport, and uh, overall it has a huge positive effect on the day-to-day -day running of the school. We're always looking to uh, add a notch to our belt and, and to capture another kind of title, and that is part of the fun of being involved in sport is always looking to achieve and trying to achieve. So I hope you enjoyed this project. It's a very exciting project, trying to select uh, the team from the past 25 years in Gort Community School. In 2017, the All-Ireland uh, Galway winning team had nine past pupils on the panel. Six of those past pupils started on the day Players like Connor Whelan, Connor Cooney, Aidan Hart, Jonathan Glynn, you know, household names. So all of those players will be up for a nomination during this process, not to try and influence it now. We love to watch past pupils uh, perform for their county, whether it's Clare or Galway. Uh, it, it, it's wonderful to watch on the TV. Uh, someone that you got to know while they were a student in school and to see them develop and mature and do well for themselves. In 2019, the All-Ireland Camogie team uh, were successful, the Galway team. We had five past pupils on that panel, players like Heather Cooney, Rebecca Henley, very proud of all of those players uh, and watching them represent Galway is always a joy to watch. So I hope you get involved in this project, uh, keep informed, it's a very much a fun project, it's part of celebrating the 25 years of Gort Community School. So thank you to all the students, all the transitioner students that have come up with this idea and are putting a lot of work into it. So keep informed, keep up to date and have fun with the project. Thank you very much. Playing Camogie here in GCS was um, it was a great experience. Team Camogie was and sport in general was, you know, a common interest am amongst a lot of us. So um, it made making friends a lot easier, and it was also a lot of fun. Yeah, for me, um, part of the school was was, was number one, and um, just really enjoyable experience. I suppose a lot of those guys that I would have played with uh, back though, back then would be would be really good friends right up to this present time, so you couldn't underestimate the importance of, of sport in school. I think this is a great idea and fair play to you for doing it. Um, I think this is a really, really different way to commemorate the 25 years. I think it's definitely a great idea. You know, there's such a big culture of Camogie and Hurling in the school and to celebrate the players who come in and out of the door to go to school is nice. For me, it's just an honour to have my name it's a it's a brilliant idea. It's uh, there's so much rich history there that has passed in the 25 years. I mean, it's a real um, hurling, camogie, heartland here in in, in Gort. Yeah, um, it's not going to be an easy one to pick. Any self promotion? Ah, uh, sure, look, <laughs> throw it the water right. I think I'm down there as a forward. Most people are probably thinking we know. Um, as a back, um, yeah, sure, look at any boats at all, get them out there for me. I'm sure you're going to have a few that are going to be saying, Jesus, I should have made that team, or, you know, and probably uh, could be saying it myself. So, um, anyway, look, it's, I think it's I think it's a great um, a great way to do it, and fair play to you, and uh, vote for me. <laughs>
something that um, you know as a clearman I would be appealing for fair um, for, 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 for fair votes that we although we are in Galway that the, there's been a huge um, Clare has contributed hugely on, on, the, on the field of play over the years so um, don't be afraid to vote for the Clare person if it comes down to it. As you heard earlier from the GCS GA Club committee members, each year we organise GA related fun events and competitions. Even though we were affected by COVID-19 this year, we still managed to get a huge amount organised. We have prizes for the winners of these competitions from our GCS GA O'Neill's Club Shop. As Johnny said, we had loads of competitions which even ran online during the school closures. It was a great response to our GCS GAA solo online challenges and well done to everyone for sending in the videos of their weekly challenges. The various weekly winners are on screen now and they each get a great CS O'Neill's Baba hat. I even see your name on the list there, Johnny. Well done. Thanks, Chloe. You know, at least I managed to beat the rest of the lads in the class, so. Yeah, I'm really Johnny. We love you. We also had two draws this year, one at the start of the year and one at Christmas. Darren Farrell won the draw for the Gort CS jersey shorts and socks. Well done, Darren. Lorcan Walsh was the winner of the Christmas draw for Gort CS Crestus Litters and Wall Balls. In fairness to Lorcan, he was unlucky to miss out on a prize for his GCS GEA solo entry. We all got a great laugh from it anyways. Maybe we should show it here. What do you think, Chloe? Yeah, I think we should. Smashing effort, Lorcan. Maybe we can give Lorcan the first place to fix the shed window. <laughs> Not a bad idea. We also had an online trick shop challenge and a series of online challenges for primary school pupils, which was won by Rory Marion. Rory wowed us all with his tricks and flicks and is one to watch for the future. Be sure to visit our official O'Neill's GCS GA club shop. You will find the shop through the link on our social media pages at GCS GAA, on the school website, and by visiting the O'Neill's website and typing GCS GA into the search. As you all know, there have been some fantastic hurlers and camogie players in Gort CS. It was great to be able to involve the wider school community in South Galway and North Clare to help us pick our all-star teams. It generated great interest with thousands of votes coming in online. We are joined now in the studio by Darrow Bennett and Ross O'Donnell, who are finally going to reveal our all-star hurling team. Over to you lads. Thanks Johnny. And thanks to everyone who voted online. Uh, it's a great way for us to link the school into the, the wider community around here. So let's have a look at the All-Star Hurling team. In goals, we have Clare Mann and Tubber native Ronan Tal. Ronan graduated in 2010 and prior to that had played on the school senior team for three years, winning two Connacht Senior A titles. He then went on to win two under-21 All-Irelands with Clare. Moving on to the full back line, and at number two we have Gort Stalwart, Andy Cohen. Andy left school in 1999 and went on to captain his club to a county title in 2011. The next time you go into Supermax and Gort, you'll see a huge picture of Andy on the wall. At fullback, we have St Thomas's man and current Galway senior hurler Shane Cooney. Shane has a number of county titles won with his club and is always a very solid performer for Gort Community School. The final position in the fullback line is filled by 2017 All Ireland winner and Beha native Adrian Tuvi. Adrian is a very versatile player and has played in many positions for the school as he does now with both club and county. We move on to the half back line now and at number 5 we have Kilbacon man Niall Donoghue. Nye was a super hurler and always performed at the highest level for school, club and county. Tragically, Nye passed away in 2013 at the age of 22. Rest in peace, Nye. At centre-back, we have Gortman and Greg Lally. Greg was a super college's hurler and went on to win a minor and senior All-Ireland with Galway and county titles with his club, Gort. At right wing-back, we have Clare Man Pat O'Connor. Another very versatile player, Pat played in many positions for school, club and county. An interesting point about Pat is that he was the first past people of Gork Community School to win a senior All Ireland hurling medal. On to the midfield now, and at number 8 we have Irla Thayne. The Erdratton man was a colossus during his time in Gork CS and put in super performances as he proved with Galway for many years. Irla won the Man of the Match award for his performance in the 2012 All Ireland final. Partnering Irla at midfield, we have James Regan from St Thomas's. 
James is a very versatile player and can play in many positions. He won a minor All-Ireland as well as a number of club championships and All-Ireland club title. At wing forward, he has James's St. Thomas's club mate, Conor Cooney. Conor put in many brilliant performances in the black and white of GCS and has gone on to win titles at both club and county levels. He joins his brother Shane on the team. Our number 11 is Gartman Aidan Hart. Aidan won every Connacht Hurling medal you could win in his time at the school and played in the senior team in second year. He played school senior, county senior and Rail railway cup in the same year and was part of Galway's 2017 All-Ireland winning team. Completing the half forward line is our Drahan Man Mountain Johnny Glenn. The 2017 All-Ireland winner always gave 100% in the Gort jersey as he did in the Maroon of Galway. On to the full forward line now. And at number 13 we have Garth's Richie Cummins. Richie captained Galway to win an All-Ireland minor title and was one of the best colleges forwards in the country during his time at Garth Community School, winning three senior A titles in a row. At the edge of the square we have Betham man Joe Gantley. Joe was a great hurler for the school and has been brilliant for Betha over the years, playing an integral part in their All-Ireland 7s win and run in 2017. The final member of our All-Star team is Convera man Conor Whelan. Connor is one of the best forwards in the country and continues to terrorise defences now, much like he did when he was in Gork Community School. It's a phenomenal team, like it's really, really good. Yep, unbelievable team. Plenty of all Ireland winners and All-Stars there. Just uh, having a quick look at Aidan Hart. He played school senior, inter-county senior at Railway Cup all in the one year. God, it's some team really there, but I'd say they can nearly win in an Ireland themselves. Uh, geez, yeah, we're not, we're not talking about the goal right now. We've, we've had a Connor here who was the, the first past pupil in the in Gort win All Ireland, and then of course we've Ronan Tap here who bet in our draft man to the Dyson Goals. Yeah, very disappointed about that one. My uh, my former primary school teacher Joel Leary was unlucky to miss out there. I, I nearly say he was he was a better goalie if I was to. I was to ah, no, that's chance. Not a chance. Ah, no, 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 hundred percent. It's remarkable, really. You have the two Cooney brothers in there as well. Two brothers on the same All Star team. It's remarkable. And Heather as well, of course, on the on the Kenobi one as well. Yeah, she's nominated for if she knows she gets it. Just have to pinpoint uh, another grand man there, Johnny Glynn, absolute mountain of a man, about 6 foot 5, but a gentle giant. I'd say any coach would love to have him on his team. I don't know about the gentle giant now, if you're back marking, I don't know if you think that. But well, it's, it's, it's great to have the team here in front of us now, and thanks to everyone who voted. Camogie is also hugely important here in Gork Community School. Darrow is now joined by Avon Island to announce our all star Camogie team that the public voted for. Back over to you guys. Thanks, guys. And thanks to everyone who voted, there was a great response to this project. Okay, so let's have a look who made the All-Star team. In goals, we have Roisin Gardner from Ardrahan. Roisin left Gork Community School in 2011, and she has gone on to win a number of county titles with Ardrahan. At number two, we have Aoife McGarry from St. Thomas's. Aoife left the school in 1999 and was an integral part of the St. Thomas's Camogie teams in the early 2000s. At fullback, we have Lorraine Cohn, again from St. Thomas's. Lorraine was a very solid performer here in Gort and went on to captain the Galway Intermediate Camogie team. The final place in the full back line is filled by Heather Cooney, which makes it an all St. Thomas's full back line. Heather joins her brothers Shane and Connor on our All Stars teams. She has won two All Ireland senior medals with Galway and two All Stars. On to the half back line now, and we look at number five. We have Sarah Keehan from Ardrahan. Sarah graduated in 2012 and was part of the Ardrahan Camogie team that reached the All-Ireland Camogie final in 2014. At centre-back, we have another player who has a sibling in the hurling team. Stephanie Taff from Tubber is at number six. Stephanie was a phenomenal centre-back during her time here. Olga Burke from St. Coleman's completes her half-back line. Olga left the school in 2018 and played with the Galway minor team. Ava Linsky from Ardrahan is the first for a midfield pairing. Ava graduated in 2018 and has won all Ireland medals at both minor and senior levels with Galway. Ava is joined in midfield by her Adrian club mate Andrea Mullins. Andrea left the school in 2014 and is currently on the Galway Intermediate panel. Next, we are on to the half forward line, and Kira Hellebert from St. Coleman's Club is at number 10. Kira is talented in many sports and has represented Galway at underage level. At centre forward, we have the Adrian Great. Sean Healy. While Shauna has won two All-Irelands and two All-Stars as a defender with Galway, she played in many positions while here in Gort and was very effective in all of them. 
Rebecca Henley completes the half forward line. Our Drahan woman Rebecca is a talented player who has two All Ireland medals and an All Star one for efforts at Galway. Finola Keeley is at number 13. The St. Thomas's woman was a very dangerous forward while here in Gort CS and went on to win an All Ireland intermediate medal with Galway. At the edge of the square, we have Siobhan Cummins from St. Colbans. Siobhan left the school in 1997 and was a talented forward, winning two minor All Irelands with Galway. Like Heather and Stephanie, she joins her brother Richie in her all-star teams. Last but not least, we have Anya Keane from St. Thomas's. Anya is currently in Leaving Cert in the school and has been on the school senior team since second year. She has played at all levels underage for Galway and is currently on the intermediate team. She surely has a bright future ahead of her. Yeah, it's a really, really impressive team. It certainly is. And as an Iran man, I have to say it's great to see so many Iran women there. It's also interesting to see Shauna Healy lined out centre forward there because we all know she plays as a defender for Galway. Yeah, it's really interesting to see. She's such a versatile player, like she plays for back centre forwards for Gort. Yeah, if you, if you line that team out on all on the final day, you'd definitely give Michelle the winner. Yeah, and it would have been great to see them all in the school at the same time. Yeah, it would have been class. As we have mentioned already today, we have a proud GA tradition in the school, and many really high profile players have come through the gates. I'm delighted to be joined on Zoom by two of them now and one of our current GCS stars, Ava Connolly. Ava and I are delighted to be joined here by Galway All Ireland winning legends Heather Cooney and Johnny Glynn. Thanks a million for joining us, guys. We'll start with you, Johnny. How's things over in New York? Ah, oh, things are good, sure. I suppose the last year has been weird enough over here, no more than at home. Hopefully, I get to get a trip home soon enough. Maybe get a couple of games in at home for a or something. Oh, geez, that would be great. We'd love to have you back. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get back. Uh, so you've both seen our 25th anniversary teams. What do you think? Oh, yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, I'm absolutely chuffed to have gotten on it because when you consider the amount of players that have played in our community school over 25 years, it's huge. So um, it's brilliant. And, and just, I suppose goes to show the, the amount of players that have gone through and have um, pushed on and played for their counties and that. But uh, yeah, no, um, some, a, a lot of the players I would have played is actually made it. And younger, again, it's it's crazy how quickly the years go by <laughs> when you leave school and suddenly you're seeing this playing alongside you that, are, that would have been quite young in the years before that. But anyway, yeah, um, tough I think I think Sean Healy got a nosebleed centre forward though. <laughs> you know, that's actually what I saw. I was like, oh my god, I laughed at that thinking, oh my god, Shauna is going to laugh. I'd always consider Shauna a back, but uh, <laughs> uh yeah, no, it was nice to see her up on the boards. <laughs> she might change it up yet again. Hey, there are three Coonies on the team and four on the shortlist. That's an amazing achievement. How important is Herlin and Kamogi in your household and how competitive was it with your brothers? Competitive for sure. So, it was, um, uh, yeah, it, it was important. I suppose we all just loved it. Um, Dad would always have been majorly into it. He would have played himself when he was younger, and Mom was always a fit, active person, so she just got along with it. She came from football country herself, but she just went along with the Camogie and the hurling. Um, we were just always. It wasn't like we were forced into anything we just loved it and we're always outside poking around it probably did me the world good poking around with the lads I suppose <laughs> stood to yeah. me <laughs> but um yeah no we just loved it and I mean like that she'd be out in the evenings or for the weekends and she'd have a few of the neighbours over as well and there were a few heated battles uh but nothing <laughs> a few cuts and bruises I suppose but nothing uh nothing long lasting <laughs> mentally or physically yeah. only stood to us I think pretty cool I suppose but yeah. And uh, back to you, Johnny. Was there much rivalry between yourself and your brother Brian? Uh no, there wasn't much rivalry. It was always one way traffic. He was the head of the young lad, no, to be honest. But, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, there wasn't much rivalry, in fairness. Now, Brian, Brian's out here as well with me. So, in fairness, it's something he was always someone I used to look up to when I was younger, even when I was in school there. He was always kind of looking after me, he was three years ahead of me in school, so any bit of bother I got in up there, he was always there to... I doubt you would have gotten in much bother, Johnny, though. <laughs> it's like uh, you. <laughs> surprised. <laughs> and, um, go on there, Johnny. 
No, I work away, I work away, go on. And just to follow on from Ava's question to Heather, there is a number of siblings on the team, Ronan and Stephanie Taff and Richie and Siobhan Cummins. Uh, you would have heard about Ronan and Richie in the school, and Ronan was on the team from second year, and Richie was one of the best fours in the country at the time. What was it like playing with them? Uh, Ro sure. Ronan Taff, in fairness, I think he's most underrated goalie in Ireland, in my eyes, like, for Dad's there playing senior senior for Clare and goals, and I don't know what to be looking at because yeah. <laughs> so, I know Taff, like he was, I was in the same year as him in school. I'd hurled it five years with him. I don't know how he wasn't looked as a senior in the county hurler for Clare because there's there isn't a man that hit a puck out better and probably was not a lad that put in as much effort as Ronan would. So I just think he was the most underrated lad there for the time he was there and. Even outside of, outside of Gort, like with Clare and that, I always thought he was always underrated. You see lads and goals there for them and Taff, they wouldn't tie Taff's laces, but for luck, that's the way I suppose, you know. Then Richie Cummins, sure, he was, when we were in school, he was the main forward at the time. I'd have heard Richie uh, maybe four years there and I heard with him with Galway for three or four years, but he got a lot, he, he used to get a lot of injuries. He had bad old, bad old ankles and I think that kind of, Done in his inter-county career a bit because he was when he was in there he he just got a bad run of luck you know but like that when we were school like he was miles ahead of everyone even when he was hurling with Galway minor there with him one year together two thousand nine he was streets ahead you know sure. yeah um Heather looking at the All Star Camogie team a number of them like Sean Healy Becky Henley and Abe Linsky have gone on to join you in the county panel can you tell us a bit about what it's like playing with them. Um, yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, it's it's funny. It's quick. The years go by, and like I remember that you were heading down to Laban um, with friends or whatever. And I used to see Becky Henley banging the ball against the wall, and she was only I can't even remember what age she was. But at that time, I would have think thought she was a young one. I was young myself. But uh, it's it's gas how quick the years go by, and how <laughs> Johnny and Lo I'd say say the same. Like you don't yeah. notice the years go by, and next thing they're playing with Jan, you're battling for places with them. Um, it's brilliant, like it's lovely, and like I don't even consider it gets to a stage where you don't consider age. <laughs> and I suppose being one of the older ones in the panel, I suppose you don't like to consider age, but uh, <laughs> you just get on with it. It kind of just it gets to a stage where you're just training together, you're um, teammates, and. I suppose that's it really you don't think about them being that bit younger than you and you would never yeah they're <laughs> everyone's been pushing everyone on in there now so it's um it's brilliant well said heather um johnny yourself aiden greg lally adrian Tui, the two connors on pat o'connor have gone on to win senior all irelands and the rest of one minors and under 21s it's some going and if they're all in gore at the same time it would have made some team did any of them stand out in particular at school to be honest, and I'm not saying it because Heather's on the line, but probably our best player in Gort was uh, was Connor, my brother. He was he was he used to hit the freeze for us. He was always accurate, and I'm uh, sure he still is. He still is a serious hurler. Like, but at the time when we were in Gort, he was he was definitely in our year anyway. Best the best player we had, and he he always was. So I just thought he always stood out. I remember when I was in first year in school, I played against Connor. I'll uh, send the side national school and say, who is this? You are seven side. We were so small and abused that. <laughs> oh, terrible. Our seven side team in, in national school was four girls on it and three lads. I remember yeah. playing on the seven side team, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Henley, At the Mickey time, those matches though were everything. <laughs> uh, funny how it goes. But yeah, no, to be honest, the lad who stood out for me an awful lot was always Connor. Like it was from first year to fifth year, he was he was always class. He just always I don't know what it was, he just always turned up, you know. So he was the one that always I used to say stood out, you know. Even when we're playing against him in club club hurling, and hated playing against him, you know. No, I was just going to ask you, Heather, on that point you made there. Um, have you any funny stories from playing camogie in school? I know you said your memory is bad now, but could you dig up something for us? <laughs> it actually is. My memory is. So I brought a few of the girls on here because I guarantee you, with a few of the girls, I'd be going, "Oh yeah, I remember that time, and I remember that time." There's nothing, not nothing. There was plenty of crack and laughs and that. But uh, I can't even pick out one funny story. I do have one particular memory, though, when you when we talk about Camogie in school. And it's funny because it was a semi-final. can't remember for the life of me. It was a junior. I can't, couldn't tell you, a senior. But we had to go up the north for, I think it was the semi that we were playing up the north. 
and it, oh, just the crack that we had heading up and I remember being up there and there was a, a some sort of fire down the way I re- tend to remember there being ash in the air or something it was the most random game ever but anyway we it was a really good game and we ended up winning it I think it was tight it was like our final it was one of those stories now where the semi-final was their final we were absolutely delighted with ourselves came down practically celebrating that we'd won and we went out and we absolutely flopped the final in so uh <laughs> yeah not such a good ending but uh we had great crack anyway that's all I remember who was training you when you were in school her and uh, Camogie we was were in two yeah, it was Mar- we had Marion Lowry. I don't think Marion Lowry's still there. And uh, Pat Canoles. Pat Canoles is still in guard. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. He's still there. Yeah, he's still there. <laughs> I was thinking as much because he was there a couple of years ago anyway. But uh, yeah, Pat and Marion used to be big into it. I remember when I was younger, starting off in like first year, it was Barney Winston that used to be over us. Um, but as the years went on, then it was Pat and Marion that were our most recent um, trainers. Um, yeah, and no, it was great crack. <laughs> And who trained you in the hurl and then, Johnny? Um, Pat Canole trained me as well, and uh, Owen Marin, mainly. Oh, Jesus, yeah, Marin. <laughs> Pat Canole, uh, he, was, he was funny, he was a good crack. Yeah. Actually, lads, do you want to do... I have a few questions here, a little quick fire round about, uh, about different uh, players when you're in school, like who was your favourite teacher, blah, blah, blah. Do you, can I ask them? Oh, what, what do we want to do? Yeah, Who wants to go first? One hitter. You lead the way. Uh, okay, I can go first. <laughs> Who was the best player you played with in school? I remember, uh, Johnny, I'm laughing, you saying Ronan. I remember Stephanie Taft being absolutely class in school. Um, I suppose they would have been out tub or as well, out clear. But uh, yeah, no, I remember her being, being really good. But there was loads. Like, with Steph, I remember being, um, she's a really good centre back for us. Who was the toughest player to mark at training? Who was the toughest player to mark at training? Um, I always remember Sharon Lee being really tricky to mark. She was kind of quick and nifty. Um, but like you could name any of them there. I remember being very good. Um, God, any of them really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Johnny, I'll come, up, I'll come back over to you. Uh, who was the funniest player or coach? Michael Noonan was definitely the funniest player. There was some crack. He's, I actually lived with him in college for a year or two, but when you were hurling there, he was always, he was just, uh, I, I don't know what he brought to it. Like, he used to play a bit of hurling life, but like, well, he, he's just the form he was bringing to every game. It was just, it was beyond real. No hesitation there. You were fully sure about that one. Oh, that was definitely Mike Noonan. He was a mess. Yeah. It was, it was a good crack. Uh, who was the most competitive player or coach? Um... Paul Fogarty, probably the most competitive player and a very underrated player as well. He's from Tubber there, but he, he, he never liked losing in it, you know? Yeah. And the next two are which player worked the hardest and who was the most underrated? But I'd say, you'd probably say Rowan for that one. You, I remember you were... Uh, Rowan Tapp, definitely. Well, like, he, he wasn't underrated in Gort. Like, obviously, yeah. he was playing with us. We, we always knew who, how good he was, but he was probably, in my eyes, he's probably awful underrated in Clare with the whole county setup. But yeah, I, I, I'd i say Ronan or Paul Fogarty, both tougher men. Yeah. Uh, Heather, now, uh, I just have to say, sorry to be surrounded now with all these Ardran people. <laughs> I'm a little uh, outnumbered here, yeah, not going to lie. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it's a pleasure. <laughs> Always, yeah. <laughs> it's a privilege. And Johnny, um, are you planning on coming back playing senior anytime soon? Uh, at the minute, sure. With the travel, there's... There's kind of travel bans at the minute, so I'm hoping I was hoping to get get back to playing for Adrian this year, but I don't think it's going to work out now with the whole with the way the COVID is and traveling and quarantine and all that. Like, so I don't yeah. ever be able to come back for weekends, so it'd be very hard to go over and back, and I won't be able to do any any uh, quarantine or whatever. So I'm not sure if it's going to work out now, but hopefully, look, we'll see. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say I'd be going around the parish now with, uh, with the petition, get Johnny Glenn back. We'll, we'll do fundraiser. <laughs> There's we'll plenty of people in Iran that wouldn't sign it, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that now. I don't know about that. Congratulations to you both on making our all-star teams. It's very well deserved. To mark the achievement, the GCSGA Club are going to give each player a commemorative 25th anniversary all-star jersey, and we will invite you into the school in September for a presentation and a team photo.
Yeah. Thanks very much, guys. We appreciate it. Thank What's you. Thanks, William. Thanks for having me on. No bother. No bother. Thank you. Well done Johnny and well done Ava as well and thanks a million to All-Ireland winner and All-Star Heather Cooney and to the legendary Johnny Glynn who joined us all the way from New York. Yeah it was super to chat with them and to get their opinions on our GCS All-Star teams. Now it's time for us to wrap up the show but before we go we would like to thank the school management for their continued support of both this podcast and the GCS GAA club. We also had a huge team of TY students working behind the scenes on every aspect of today's show from PR and social media, to film crew and editors, set designers, research team and presenters. So thanks to our GY team, to my fellow presenters, and to you, the viewers, and everyone who voted. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.